Hey, um, so I am Jermir. I go to um, Burlington High School. I'm in my 11th year. And I'm um, here yeah, with my friends, Oliver and Bonnie. I think they can introduce uh, me. <laughs> okay, hi. My name is Boniface. I'm a junior. I go to Barrington High School. I'm just gonna pass to Oliver. Oh, hi. My name is Olivier. Uh, I also go to Barrington High School and I'm a sophomore. Right. Um, is, is it okay if, uh, what, what name would you prefer to use? I'm Luis, Luis. is that okay? Luis is fine, yeah, Luis is fine. Okay. Okay, so, um, can you tell us like, a little bit about yourself, like who you are, what you do. Yes. Well, uh, Luis Calderon, um, also formerly of Burlington High School, Burlington High School alumni, was a, was a seahorse myself. Oh. Uh, and also known as uh, Olivia Calderon's uh, father, who was also uh, a, a 11th grader, third year student at Burlington High School. So she's your she's your uh, colleague at school. Also, Ravon C, the rapper, the, the world renowned rapper Ravon C, also Burlington High School alum, their dad. And uh, besides uh, that, I am a um, uh, I'm involved with a number of things, but my my day job is I own and operate a marketing, advertising, and uh, PR agency in Burlington called OKOK okay, okay, Marketing and Creative, and uh, we work with uh, a number of different local businesses, uh, national and international uh, brands. We also work with a bunch of organizations and and uh, we're involved with a variety of different projects. I um, am also on the board of directors of uh, the King Street Youth Center, um, Chill, uh, Burton Snowboards, uh, Action Sports uh, Program. Um, I am on the board of a group called uh, Winooski Strong, which is where I live in Winooski. And I am on the board of a group called uh, the Vermont Professionals of Color Network. Uh, as well as uh, uh, on a board for a group called the uh, Friends for A Dog. So, so pretty busy around town, working on a, a number of different events and and organizations all around. You know, building our community. Okay. Um. Uh, so, usually it seems like all these uh, community organizations are like always trying to make the community better in some ways. <laughs> what do you say that you do to? I guess, help out the community or make it better in some ways? What I think that I do personally is I never forget who I am and where I came from, you know, um, and and how long that I've lived in this area. It's a very long time and and how, how hard it was for me and how strange I felt all of the time that I was growing up when I was at BHS. You know, my family is from Cuba. I was the first person in my family born in the United States. So, um, I was the first to have this American experience. And my mother and my sister and I moved here when I was young, at like 12 years old from Miami. So going from a world of just being around my people, you know, black and brown people speaking Spanish around me. And then I moved up here to Vermont and it was a very white place. And I, you know, experienced a lot of culture shock. Um, and, and so there were people along the way that, that were really important uh, to my development that were adults that uh, try to help me and you know, point me in the right direction and include me and involve me and expose me to opportunities. But there were a lot of adults that did not. There were a lot of adults that like today would, would have been you know, considered failing students. So I, I never forget that. And that's what drives a lot of what I try to do for our community. I'm, I, I, am, I have gone on to have a, a really uh, successful career and have had an amazing uh, you know, variety of experiences and got to meet and work with and for some very uh, amazing people. And it was really because a couple, two, three people really you know, reached out and, and tried to make a difference in my life. And, uh, and so I, I, I center that and I think about uh, young people 
who I've who, maybe you three, you know, that that some of the work that I would be doing uh, would open doors for for you folks so that you can also have some of these experiences. So that's kind of what I'm about uh, with the work that I do. Okay. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, you work with the Friends for Adults. I yes. just want to know uh, what's that? <laughs> yeah, um, just, just... Have, you, have you ever heard of that before? Uh, I think I have, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure what's okay. that. Well, Friends for Adog is a uh, Friends for Adog Foundation is a group. Uh, it's and it's this is our eighth our eighth year as a foundation, and and our friend, my friend DJ Adog, uh, uh, was a Burlington DJ and a legend. He was one of the best DJs in in, in the world, in my opinion. And I'm a DJ also. I grew up DJing um, here at at the University of Vermont radio station at WRUV when I was and when I was a sophomore a junior at BHS I, I did a sh like what you guys are doing I did a show up at um at WRUV and so I I, I got to meet uh Andy uh a dog Williams back then and we became friends lifelong friends and he got sick years ago with leukemia and um and unfortunately passed away and then um a, a bunch of our friends got together to have a celebration in his honor and his memory. We celebrate, Burlington celebrates um, A-Dog Day on August 26th, around his birthday every year. And uh, we have a number of events all around town, a lot of music, art, uh, dance performances. And, um, and then the, the foundation itself works with like uh, the King Street Youth Center providing uh, programming at the King Street all around music and, and art and culture. And um, as well as um, a number of different initiatives around trying to find uh, bone marrow matching for folks that might have uh, that might need it. So it's a it's a local organization, but it's one that's uh, dear to my heart. And 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 if you've been on the waterfront um, and you've seen the skate park down there, the skate park down by the waterfront, that's that's named after uh, a dog, Andy a dog uh, Williams Skate Park. Oh yeah. Uh, also have one question. Since you say that working in the community, what can be improved in the community? What can be improved in the community? Yeah. Man, that's a really broad question, right? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just narrow that down to issues that are important to me, and I think you, you guys, perhaps. Um, during these times. Today is May 26th. This is one day after the anniversary of the uh, murder of George Floyd. Um, and, and everything in the world, as I know it, can be marked as before George Floyd and then after that day, George Floyd. So we're, we're one year in the, in, in the new American history after George Floyd. And, um, and this last year, you know, we saw uh, our community uh, get together, rally together, and to speak out around injustices in, in, in Winooski and in Burlington and in Vermont and in the country and in the world. And, and then we saw people take that energy that was out into the streets and force uh, change, force those converse conversations and these cultural shifts, these power shifts had to happen. Uh, because of the of the energy that people in the streets, specifically young people, uh, you know, apply a lot of pressure, and now we're starting to see power shift uh, significantly in this community here and across the country. And so that's the idea. That's what's that's what's necessary. It's the it's the energy that is out there that then if 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 harnessed properly can convert into power and to make real change happen. It's like electricity. If you just take electricity on the wild, it's just out. But if you take it and you control it and it becomes, uh, it fills a light bulb, then it, it, it lightens the whole room. And that's kind of how I see uh, a lot of the work that's happened this past year. So what I think that needs to happen in our community is to realize that um, uh, we're just in the beginning of generational change, um, of, which means to me at least 10 years. Your generation, 
you guys are seven, 16, 17 year old uh, young people, you know, it, 10 years from now, uh, you are going to be in a different place. You're going to start your, your, some of your early jobs. And the work that is happening today is going to impact that life that you're going to have 10 years from now, that job that you're going to get, that business, hopefully, that you're going to start that house that you're going to want to buy so that you can start to build your own generational wealth. All of that is going to happen, you know, in 10 years. And it may seem like a million years from now, because that's roughly about what half of your life is now, but it'll come quick. And so what's happening today is going to impact that. And so what I see the need for is young people like yourselves, specifically young people of color like yourselves, to, to get off of the sidelines and to get into the game and to get involved and find a spot anywhere, but to get active and get vocal and get in front you know, of this and be part of this movement, especially living up here in Vermont. Um, what are the ups and downs uh, working in the community as you are? You look like a busy guy. <laughs> he is. What are the ups and downs? I mean, yeah, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't happen. Change doesn't happen overnight. So, you know, I work in the, I, I, my job, you know, is a fast paced job. I, I, I can, I can do things and I can expect results quickly. I, you know, we, we operate social media. We're so we are social media experts, right? So I can come up with something, blah, 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 put it out and instantly the world sees it. But like working in the community, it, things operate at a different pace. Um, so you just had, you know, I, I have to remind myself to be patient. And, uh, uh, but I also try to apply methodologies and tactics that I know that work in my professional world to, to issues that are, um, you know, uh, in our community to try to like speed the process up a little bit and have, uh, and, and try to see change sooner, you know? I mean, but but also like, you know, what, what one thing that happened this uh, interesting that I didn't see at all coming was um, I, I work with uh, an organization, as I mentioned earlier, the, the Vermont Professionals of Color Network. Uh, and um, um, we were, there was a BIPOC COVID vaccine clinic that the uh, city, uh, had announced a couple people had gotten together and announced this and I saw that it seemed like the rollout was a little questionable it, it had a lot of like gaps in it and um, they they were just getting started and they were trying to figure it out and I asked a bunch of questions and they um, folks said hey these are great questions why don't you come in tomorrow and help us get involved and you know get going so I came in and was able to with my colleagues um, build out the BIPOC COVID vaccine clinics here in Burlington. Um, and, uh, and I've been working with the state, I've been working with the city, and we were able to really quickly put together a clinic that is uh, for people of color and, um, and their households. And it's the least medical experience that people have ever had. It's a complete vibe. People come up, the music is dope. They see each other who, you know, people like us are, are, are in the space. A lot of us, I'm there to greet people. Um, and, and it's a different experience for our culture and our community for, from a medical experience that we have had here historically, you know? So for me, I was able to take, you know, something that was kind of like challenging and, and, and then and then immediately fix it and work on it and make it great. And, and it's been a really amazing, um, uh, uh, program and we have vaccinated thousands of people in our community we've saved thousands of lives and uh we have been doing this for the last two and a half months and we're doing it uh up through july cool have you guys been uh vaccinated yeah, oh, yeah. i got my first one you got your first one okay yeah, yeah i already got my second too okay cool where'd you guys go get your uh shots at uh lv L oh you did an llv yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Good. Yeah. Those are our partners over in, uh, out of Winooski. So yeah, we've been working together on, on that. That's great. Oh yeah. Um, 
from high school, uh, from high school, what was your goal from high school and how did that change you to the person that you are today? Okay, that's a great question. High school was terrible. <laughs> high school was terrible. Burlington really? High School was a terrible experience for me. That was the worst experience for me. It was a long time ago and uh, we weren't, the world, the country wasn't at a point where you could just say, hey, this is racism. Like no one even knew what institutional racism was but that institution was racist and I would bear, I would, I would like, if I had to get in there, I might still find some racism within that institution today, but it definitely was in 1990, 88 to 1992 when I went there. And there were people who just, you know, just made me feel terrible. And um, I was lucky enough to, to uh, meet some folks that put me on to, um, you know, actually like, it's a long story. Uh, you could, there's a, there's a long story. I, I won't bore you with all the details, but I started to do radio. I got involved like you guys are doing a TV show. So somebody like reached out to you and you guys, next thing you know, you're doing a TV show. Same thing for me. I got to go do radio at WRUV. And at the time, you know, I did a, a it was, I had a very popular, I was 15 years old, 16 years old, like doing radio. Uh, and there was no Spotify. This is before the internet or Spotify. So like, if you wanted to hear, hip hop music, I was one of the main DJs. And I had a big popular show Friday nights, eight to 11. And if you wanted to hear Tribe Called Quest in Burlington, Vermont or Public Enemy or any of the music, you had to tune into the radio station. So I was like, a, I was a young kid just like doing it, just like you guys. And um, I found that I really liked it. It was really fun. I, I got to like be creative and express myself and be part of a scene and, and the culture. I went on to school a few years later for uh, radio at, uh, at Emerson College in Boston. Um, and, uh, and that happened just because like, you know, there were a bunch of people who said that, you, you know, you're, not, you're probably not gonna do it. It's probably not gonna happen for you. And there was one white lady, Monica Sargent from VSAC who was like, you should come with us. We'll go look at the school anyway. And, um, and you know, that's my, that's my advice is like, there'll be people who tell you, don't worry about it. Just go get a, a housekeeping job somewhere. And I would, I would challenge you to say that's not enough for you. You know, like you guys are incredible people. You have a TV show. Um, you, are, you are doing way more than, than other people your same age are doing. So the world is yours to do. You know, just my, my advice for young people um, is to not let anyone dim your light in any way, right? There's always a way to do anything that you want to do. So... You, it, a lot of times it's just a bunch of paperwork. There'll be a bunch of people that tell you no, but there'll be eventually somebody that says yes. And those yeses are the, are the doorways that open, the, that put you on a pathway. So for me, that was that. Like I did radio, then I got, I met other people. We got other projects, this, that, you know, and just got onto the sort of uh, journey where I ended up eventually making a career, you know, being able to get a job as a profession doing what I do. And then, you know, did that for a while. And then the next thing you know, I have a, I have a career, you know? Um, but for me, the, 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 the thing is, was, and this is, I'm sure different, maybe a little bit different now, but you know, when some, my, my advice for, for young people um, is just when you get the opportunity Unfortunately, in this country, you guys are gonna have to pr prove yourselves much harder than your white counterparts. So just be prepared for that. Start training for that, start getting ready for that and just deliver, just deliver as much as you can, as hard as you can. But don't let any challenges slow you down or deter you at all. Just get up every single day and go handle it. For sure, thanks. Sorry for the sorry for the pep talk, but I go back to when I was a kid, man. These guys were like, "Yo, nah, you're not, nah, you not, nah, not for you," you know. And even my family, like even my mom, like she came from Cuba. You know what I mean? She was an immigrant. Like just being here was enough. Just the fact that I was gonna graduate from an American high school was like it. You know what I mean? And like they weren't even talking to me at, at my house about college. You know, like it just wasn't in our like. It just wasn't in our, in our scope. And, um, you know, I got exposed to other people. I got exposed to, you know, just like you guys, I got exposed to the, these students. And then they were like, oh no, college is a thing, you know, like, 
um, here, apply for it. Apply for the financial aid, apply for the scholarships, the grants, all of that. But you, I tell you what, man, like you guys gotta like, you gotta go, you want it, you gotta dig for it because I don't know anybody, nobody's ever just giving it to you at the end, you know? For sure. Okay, Jeremiah, have any questions? Yeah, um, so you talk about like a lot about like doing these community work and stuff like, I don't know, it seems like fancy jobs. And then there's, you talk about music, which is like kind of different and stuff. But like, how do you like balance those two? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. A um, couple years ago, I had this, um, I worked for, I went from, you know, DJing and then I ended up getting a job at Burton Snowboards. I was, uh, the mar I worked in marketing for Burton Snowboards for many years. And then I ended up getting, moving to California, doing another company, Fox Racing, doing marketing. I worked for American Eagle Outfitters, doing marketing. Then we came back here and I started my own agency and I worked for a bunch of different companies, okay? Um, I ended up going back to work at Burton. And my whole time as a marketing person, DJing, was the thing like DJing and throwing a party. Like, so being the guy who threw the parties when I was young, they told me that I was, I was, it was, I was just going to get in trouble, but that becomes a job that becomes events. You know what I mean? Like if you want to have a party and you want to invite people, it's the same as doing any event. You got to like have a good show, book talent, promote it, get people to come. It has to be dope so that people come back, you know, um, and so I was able to like figure out these sort of life DJ lessons to my career and make a whole job out of it. Um, and then, and I thought it was great. And then um, I met a bunch of different people along the way, different artists and whatnot. And, um, and my friend uh, who I went to BHS with also, um, he and I worked together at, uh, at, at Burton Snowboards uh, and his father uh, is Bernie Sanders. Um, and when Bernie was getting ready to run for president in 2016, so back in 2015, uh, Dave Driscoll, uh, my, my friend from childhood and colleague at Burton, we were just be talking about, like, I was asking him a million questions. What, you know, what about, what's Bernie going to do for the poster and what's the music going to be about? And like, what's, you know, who's going to, who, what's the soundtrack of the campaign, that kind of stuff. I just sort of came at it like as a DJ. And, um, and these were all great questions. And they asked me to join the campaign. So then I, I ended up working on, the, on Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign as the director of arts, culture, and the youth vote for the 2006 campaign. And that directly came out of like being a, a Burlington High School student who did a, 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 a radio show at, B, at, at WRUV that then led to one other thing that then led to another thing that all of a sudden, a few years later, boom, I'm like, I'm on a presidential campaign, uh, you know, and, and overseeing a part that was like, you know, probably the funnest and coolest part of the whole thing, which was just the energy around it, the bands the, and, and the young people. And so I treated that campaign the same way I treated DJing. I just like DJed the campaign. I just took, you know, like how I take two songs and put them together and make a vibe. And then I put, you know, 200 songs together and make a whole set. It was sort of the same approach to, to, to that campaign. I took this artist and that event and this, you know, rapper and put them on stage with Bernie and then this and that. And it, you know, it all, it all kind of became a vibe. Yeah. Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Olivier, you have any questions? Uh, yeah. What is important for you about community? Like, about community? Uh huh. What is important for me about community is like, it's about, um, I mean, again, for me, it's like, you know, coming here and, and still being um, uh, considered the only guy who looks like me in the room a lot of the times. Um, it's important for me to have been able to. Uh, build roots in this community. This is my community. I grew up here. I have made things happen here. I could move anywhere in the world, but I choose to live here and, and work here and raise a family here 
because I love it here. I love living here and I love this place. So for me, what's important about building the community or, or, or having community here is being part of it, getting in it, getting engaged, doing my part, whatever that might be, whatever that could be at the time to, 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 to add to it, to make it better, to make it better for the next generation, to make it better so that to do work that matters so that at some point someone says, this dude came through one time and he fought for, you know, for us so that it was easier for the next generation, you know? So that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. That's why it's super important for me. Yeah. We're the next generation. You are the next generation. Yeah, you guys are, man. Let's talk, let's talk about you guys a little bit. Can I, can I ask you guys a couple questions? Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, sure. Olivier, do you prefer to be called Oliver or Olivier? Olivier. Olivier. Yes. Yeah, we're, okay. What's it? Tell me about your name. Uh, what do you mean? Well, like, where, where, like who, who gave you your name? Oh, my dad. Is, what's your dad's name? Uh, a baby. Nice. It's a dope name. I'm just yeah. curious because, uh, because, um, you know, in the beginning, you guys said, is it you prefer Lewis or Luis? And, and, um, and your and uh, Bonnie said, uh, Oliver, but you know, one thing I would, I would, uh, inc I love your name, man. One thing I've learned along here is when I first got here, I was my whole life known as Luis. And then when I got up here, it was easier for everybody to call me Lewis. And so I let, I let everybody, I, I, I'm, you know, you know, uh, call myself Lewis to people, but then, this last year I realized, yo, like my father named me Luis and I made it easy for people to take my name away. So um, that's one thing for sure, you know, to hold on to, hold on to your, yeah, hold on to your name, bro. Uh, it's kind of same like that too. Yeah. Yeah. It's your, your father gave you that. Hold on to it. You make these people work. All right, guys, it looks like we're hold wrapping up. You guys me. have any last questions? Uh, um, no, I would just uh, thank you for your time yeah, yeah. You. this was an honor it was really an honor we got to learn um a couple stuff that we didn't know about our community and how to improve in the near future i guess this was a pretty good opportunity well listen the opportunity the honor the, the pleasure and the honor is mine you guys are the future okay i want you guys to know that to know that right now you guys are the future and at, just like your organization, I promise to you, I vow to you to be my brother's keeper. I am my brother's keeper. So if you guys need anything ever, anything at all, you wanna to talk to somebody who looks like you that's made it in this community, you can always reach out to me. You can always come up to my office and I will be happy to like mentor you guys and just show you guys the, what I know. Everything I have is yours. And that's what it takes to build. But you guys are out here in the streets doing the work and, I, and, I, and I'm proud of you guys. You guys are brilliant, and I can't wait to see what amazing things you all end up doing individually and together, all right? So be proud of yourselves and know that you've made your ancestors very proud. You are your ancestors' wildest dreams. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, my boys. Bye. I'll talk Bye. to you soon, all right? Yep. All right.